Hello and welcome to the 14 tutorial in the Cocos 2DX Flappy Bird C++ series and in this part we're going to be looking at displaying the score. We'll be continuing on from the previous part of the series so if you haven't done it or you don't have the source code for, for whatever reason don't worry there'll be a link in the description. But let's just go ahead and open up our project. Uh, let's drag it down here. Okay, we now have a game that you can play and earn points, but the score is displayed on the game scene. It's just printed out sort of in the log, but that's not really what we want. Or the game over scene once the player dies. We will now be displaying the score on the game scene in this tutorial. As usual, we will create a hash define as they are really amazing. This will be the score's font size. So we're going to do hash define score underscore font underscore size 0 0.1. Again, we're going to be factoring in screen size as usual. Let's now declare a label for the score in game scene. Uh, so let's go down here. We're going to do cocos 2D label asterisk score label. And then we're going to go to a game scene .cpp. Before we can use the score, we need to create a string of the number, and we can't just specify a raw number in a label. So if we just go down here, and we're going to use the cocos 2 d string, which is underscore underscore string. If you use regular string, that belongs to the standard name with AKA. It's not cocos 2 dx related. So cocos 2 dx to get around it, they put underscore underscore in front of the keyword string. So, um, score. You might be wondering. I'm just going to talk about something else for a second. You might be wondering if they've done that with string. Why haven't they done it with something like uh, sprite, for example? And the reason they haven't oh, here is sprite. There. Why haven't the reason they haven't done it with sprite is because sprite isn't built in to uh, Cocos. I mean, it's not built into C++. Whereas string is. Whereas uh, you can get sprite in obviously frameworks, but their stuff on top and. There's only so much you can do to try and prevent frameworks on top that you don't know of uh, getting conflictions like with naming. So let's just initialize this so underscore underscore string colon colon create with format. And you might be thinking why I'm using un underscore underscore string instead of auto. Auto keyword would work just as good. The reason you, I'm using underscore underscore string is just so you are aware that it is underscore underscore string and not just a regular string. It's just, just so you're aware of that. But in the future, if you want to use the keyword auto, that's a-okay. So we're going to put percent i score. Let's now initialize the score label. Make sure the font folder is added to the resources folder. So if we go down, not there, you don't want to scroll down there. If you want to scroll down here, we got iPad, iPad HD, iPhone, iPhone HD, iPhone HD 5, but no, and sound, but no font. So we're just going to show in Finder because we actually have a font folder here, and we'll just be using this font that we've got markerfelt.ttf. Let's drag and drop the resources, add the as usual, create folder references for any added folders, add it to the map target, why not? And what we're going to do now is score label equals label colon colon create with t ttf and for the text we're going to put temp score get c string and then for the font we're going to put fonts forward slash marker felt ttf then for the font size, we want to put visible size dot height, and we're going to time that by score font size. So now you'll be relative to the screen size. So if you're running on a Retina iPad or a regular iPad or even on an old iPhone, they will look very similar instead of it just literally being physically the same size, which obviously you don't want. Now let's set the color, which will be white in this instance. So we're going to do score label, set color, the color we do color free B colon color. Now we can set white, we can set, we can set RGB values as well if we want to. We will now set the position of the score label, so we're going to do score label, set position, and for this point, what we're going to do is visible size, 
dot width divided by two plus origin dot x. Then I'm going to do visible size dot height time by zero point seven five, aka be three quarters along in the y axis plus origin dot y. And the score level can now be added to the scene as a child. So if we do this add child score label and we're just going to make sure it's on top of everything and we're just going to run this. Now we still got two last things to do um, but we'll do these after we run the application so you can actually see it working and what the issue is at the moment. You may have guessed it but if you just hang on a moment let it load. I wish the simulator was faster. Don't get me wrong, it's still pretty good. Uh, Considering how you other than if you use the Android simulator, emulator is terrible. You just don't want to use an Android emulator. But an iOS simulator, you can get away with it. Okay, and we click play. I can see we've got the score there. We scored a point, but it didn't update. And the reason it didn't update is because it still got the old text. So we need to go back here and we need to update the text and we'll do that whenever we score a point, so aka here. So we'll actually we can literally copy and paste this line because we need that right here. So we need to create a new temporary score string variable, then we need to score label, set string. And we just do temp score, get C string, and we can just remove this point CC log point score now because we don't really need it. And we can remove this as well. So now if we run this, click play, and we have zero, so let's just score a point. And it's updated to a one, two, and three. So there we go, we have a scoring system now, or a scoring system that actually displays the score. That's it for this part of the series. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at displaying the score on the game over scene. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at someoneonsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the required links for source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day.